If you haven't been keeping up with the latest news on GTA 6 in the past year, you might be surprised to learn just how much information has surfaced. Let's bring you up to date. Here's a rundown of everything we currently know about GTA 6. First, let's talk about the game engine. Developers have made significant tweaks to the Euphoria physics engine, enhancing ragdoll physics and overall game physics compared to GTA 5. Additionally, they're incorporating lighting and skybox systems, akin to those seen in Red Dead Redemption 2, promising improvements like volumetric clouds and better lighting effects. Notably, leaks also hint at advanced weather systems, with heavy fog making an appearance, a feature less prevalent in GTA 5. Moving on to characters, while the main protagonists are Jason and Lucia, leaks have unveiled additional character names. Alongside Dre, who's distinct from Dr. Dre, there's Sam, a friend of Dre, and others like Kai, Wyman, Billy, Tit, yes, that's the name, Zach R.B. Shaw, Vicky, Iris, Shaneese, Booby, and YJ. Surprisingly, we even have details about their heights in the game, with Lucia standing at 5 3 inches and Jason at 6 1. Wait. Regarding the setting, we know of three different gangs in Vice City. San For San, a Haitian gang, the Guardia Brothers, and the far-right militia. These details paint an exciting picture of what to expect in GTA 6. We're also privy to a variety of items and tools in GTA 6. Among these are the auto-dialer, binoculars, immobilizer bypass, cutoff tool, painkillers, pool cue, trauma kits, golf driver, food and drink, golf putter, USB drive, golf iron, crowbar, golf wedge, torch, slim gem tracker, jammer, duffel bag for looting, cigarettes, and a loot backpack. Furthermore, there's a confirmed list of weapons including a rocket launcher, assault rifle, baseball bat, polymer pistol, knife, bolt action sniper rifle, Molotov cocktail, spear gun, which is intriguing, smoke grenade, compact SMG, flashbang, micro SMG, sniper rifle, heavy machine gun, auto rifle, and pump action shotgun. The weapon wheel, much like in Red Dead Redemption 2, will be divided into three sections weapons, equipment, and gear. It's interesting to note that players can hold different weapons in each hand, with a quick item inventory displayed in the bottom left corner of the screen. While leaked recreations of the weapon wheels offer a glimpse, it's likely that the final version may evolve as the game progresses in development. In one video snippet, an NPC is seen firing at Jason, prompting a health tip to appear on the left side of the screen when Jason's health drops. If you find yourself injured in GTA 6, your health will regenerate slowly over time. To speed up the process, you can access your weapon wheel and use a recovery item. In GTA 5, health only regenerates up to 50%, requiring snacks for full recovery. It seems in GTA 6, you might naturally regenerate to full health, albeit at a sluggish pace. While not confirmed, it's implied that using a medical item will hasten the healing process. As for open world activities, there are seven confirmed ones so far. Dice, golf, fishing, races, adventuring, shipments, and delivery van events. One video reveals a delivery van event near Port Gellhorn's industrial area, where security cameras are active, adding a layer of challenge to potential robberies. Speaking of which, robbery events are highlighted, notably the Hank's Waffles heist, where Jason and Lucia execute a daring robbery. Other clips suggest Jason possesses an ability, allowing him to perceive through walls. Additionally, there are events centered around searching vehicle trunks for either valuable items or nothing at all. Lastly, delivery and pickup warehouse events are mentioned for Port Gellhorn, although specifics remain unclear. In terms of accessible buildings, GTA 6 promises a plethora of options including the Malibu Club, a pawn shop, Jack of Hearts strip club, supermarkets, bars, restaurants, apartments, and laundries, enhancing the immersive experience. Let's delve into the multiplayer aspect. In a leaked clip from GTA 6, we observed a multiplayer session with a player count displayed as PL2 of 32 inches in the bottom left corner. This indicates that there were two players present in the lobby out of a maximum capacity of 32 slots. It's reminiscent of Red Dead Online and GTA Online, where the stated capacity is 32, but practically it's 30 players plus two additional spots reserved for spectators. While it's hoped for larger lobbies in GTA 6, during this testing phase, it seems they were experimenting with 30 player lobbies. Moving on to collectibles, there's mention of Wyman car parts. In one clip featuring Lucia, a developer is seen placing a cardboard box with a circular icon, signaling its lootable nature. The debug text on this box indicates it as collectibles car parts and Wyman car parts boxed generic used, 
hinting at the possibility of collecting car parts, potentially related to a character named Wyman, who speculations suggest shares an interest in classic cars with Jason. Regarding collectible hats, there's footage of Jason in an apartment, where a developer interacts with a hat labeled as an ambient collectible hat, according to debug text, hinting at clothing items being collectible ambient features within the game. Additionally, a compiled list of all brands featured in the game is provided, with acknowledgement that while some may hold relevance to the story, many may not. For convenience, the list is displayed on screen, allowing viewers to pause the video for further inspection if desired. Now let's explore the array of confirmed animals in the game. We'll encounter snakes, seagulls, skunks, raccoons, alligators, waiting birds, squirrels, southern leopard frogs, crayfish, lizards, skunk apes, pigeons, opossums, and whales. While these are the animals confirmed thus far, it's likely we'll encounter even more upon the game's release. These are just the ones we're aware of currently. Additionally, numerous new mechanics have been uncovered. You'll have the ability to walk while in cover, a long-awaited feature allowing players to go prone, marking a first in GTA gameplay. Loot bags will enable the storage of additional loot, and dropping and picking up weapons will be possible. There's a new underfire animation where characters cover their faces during combat, along with the option to self-revive after taking heavy hits. Other notable mechanics include the ability to switch shoulders while aiming down sights, grappling during fistfights, and the introduction of buddy comms and a buddy ping system. This system, likely shared between protagonists Jason and Lucia, remains intriguing, with its full functionality yet to be revealed. Additionally, a new cover mode is introduced, altering the way shooting from car windows is executed. Characters will now fully exit the window, enabling full 360-degree shooting. Moreover, there's a new ability system, possibly exclusive to Jason, allowing for a form of wall perception. Whether Lucia will possess this ability remains uncertain. Players can also interact with more objects and NPCs, engaging in actions like carrying bodies, robbing, threatening, and conversing during robberies. Furthermore, the ability to pick up additional items like beer bottles and cans enriches the gameplay experience. Let's delve into some of the exciting new gameplay systems. Firstly, we have money laundering, which was hinted at during the Hank's Waffles robbery. An icon tracked to the car wash property displayed a washing machine with a dollar sign indicating potential money laundering opportunities. This suggests that properties could be purchased with the aim of laundering money, although specifics on how this will work remain undisclosed. Nonetheless, it seems players will once again have the option to purchase certain types of businesses for illicit activities. Fences, not the ones you jump over or drive through, but rather individuals involved in illegal transactions, are confirmed to be in the game. A fence acts as a middleman, buying illegal items from players to resell them to others. Hacking will also play a role, with Lucia seen carrying various hacking tools, although it's uncertain if Jason will have access to these items as well. Previous leaks hinted at Lucia's role as the designated hacker, but only time will tell. Pragmatic, cool, and chaotic romantic are different event types mentioned in the events list. Players will also have the ability to command the other character during a robbery. In leaked footage, a tip prompts players to check in with Jason, or hold for more options, indicating the potential to issue commands to your partner during a heist. This feature should streamline gameplay, allowing players to effectively control both characters simultaneously. Let's dive into the AI witness system and police recognition feature, which is quite significant. In the Hank's Waffle robbery video, Beneath the Wanted Level Stars, there's a mention of full description, suggesting that witnesses have detailed information about you. This implies that once identified, the police will recognize you. When Lucia enters a police vehicle, there's initially no vehicle description, but this quickly changes to a full vehicle description. This indicates that law enforcement will have detailed information about your vehicle. Moreover, the text warns that any vehicle seen entering will be noted by the authorities. This suggests that even after losing a wanted level, if spotted again in the same vehicle, the police will pursue and apprehend you. During the robbery scene, Jason is shown attempting to prevent customers with yellow icons above their heads from calling the cops or fleeing. Additionally, a female NPC inside the diner exhibits similar behavior, with her icon flickering as Lucia leaves, turning red when surrounded by cops, and then fleeing upon spotting Lucia. These advanced NPC systems indicate a more sophisticated interaction model. Regarding item sharing, Jason and Lucia appear to be able to share items between them. For instance, in one clip, Jason steals items from containers, keeping some for himself while sharing others. Unlocking doors and gates is also demonstrated, 
as seen in a video featuring Jason in the San Fersan area. Debug text indicates locked door panels, implying the need to unlock specific doors and gates. Moving on, let's delve into the plethora of new features, spanning two full pages. Firstly, there's an enhanced AI system, exemplified in a video where enemy AI targets Lucia when she turns around. These AI adversaries showcase improved decision-making, adjusting their shooting strategy based on the circumstances. Notably, they dynamically alter their position concerning nearby objects, hopefully avoiding frustrating, head-glitching tactics. Additionally, they exhibit more tactical behavior, like lowering their profile during reloads and strafing left to right while firing. NPC behavior has also received an upgrade, with groups of AI no longer wandering solo, but instead moving in clusters, reminiscent of Red Dead Redemption 2's feature. This is evident in a video, where Lucia encounters a group of tourists, chatting as they pass by. This adds depth to the pedestrian dynamics, as previously seen in GTA V, where individuals roamed independently. Now, expect to see various groups, and even couples strolling together, enhancing the game's immersion. A new feature allows players to surrender to the police during a robbery, introducing an intriguing dynamic with yet-to-be-revealed consequences. Additionally, players can purchase gumballs from vending machines, possibly serving as a health boost, although details remain speculative. Similar to GTA V, your character's attire will become soiled over time, adding a layer of realism. Furthermore, glimpses of Jason in various states, with different hair lengths and facial hairstyles, hint at a hair growth system akin to Red Dead Redemption 2's feature. This seems highly probable given the game's lineage. In terms of sustenance, players can consume items directly from their inventory. In a gas station scene, Jason adds wine, soda, and fruit to his inventory, indicating the ability to eat and drink on the go, similar to mechanics seen in Red Dead and GTA Online. Introducing a new event type known as a cop trap, which will be strategically set up in various locations. The confirmed locations are displayed on your screen. This indicates that law enforcement will deploy different tactics to ensnare you. Alongside this, there's a new police system known as Time Until Cops Dispatch. Now, when you commit a crime, the police won't immediately appear. Instead, you'll have a brief window to evade capture before law enforcement starts converging on your location. Security cameras play a role in surveillance, but their functionality differs from GTA Online. Instead of instant detection, there's a detection meter akin to games like Payday 2 or 3. As the meter fills up, you'll need to break line of sight within a certain time frame to avoid detection. Players will also have the ability to restrain NPCs, primarily through zip ties, as seen in leaked footage. This feature adds a new layer to robberies, allowing for more control over the situation. Furthermore, players can loot vehicles, as shown briefly in the Hank's Waffles video. A button prompt to examine SUV appears, suggesting the opportunity to inspect random vehicles and potentially pilfer valuables from them. In GTA 6, expect an enhanced car hijacking system. For instance, the presence of the immobilizer bypass suggests that stealing luxury cars will be more challenging. Additionally, an item called a Slim Jim will be utilized to unlock older vehicles, indicating increased difficulty in car theft. Moreover, there are events that allude to the possibility of failing to steal a car, with distinct scenarios like steal car in progress and steal car fail, showcasing potential mishaps. Two intriguing events, carjacking dash cat and carjacking dash advanced AI, hint at further complexities in vehicle related activities. The game boasts improved vehicle damage and handling, evident in clips where car crashes exhibit more realistic effects, such as front fenders splitting apart and car hoods bending realistically. Furthermore, car interiors now feature a functional GPS and waypoint system, enhancing the immersion, especially in first-person driving. Additionally, players have the option to enter a car from the passenger seat, adding a touch of realism to the gameplay experience. Considering these details, it's evident that GTA 6 prioritizes intricate design elements, as evidenced by the meticulous attention to detail throughout the game. In GTA 6, Expect to encounter raccoons scouring through trash cans and pilfering food bags. This is evident in the game files, where three world events, Raccoon Climb Out of Garbage, Raccoon Rummage Trash, and Raccoon Steal Food Bee are documented. While there are numerous intricate details to delve into, if you find this level of detail intriguing, you can find more information in the provided link below, specifically on pages 19 and 20. As for sound design, it's no surprise that sound will be more realistic in GTA 6. Weapon sounds are crisper and more authentic, with increased volume for a more immersive experience. Additionally, the impact of bodies hitting the floor will have a deeper thud, 
creating a more visceral effect. Police sirens will reverberate off buildings and environmental elements more realistically, while the sound of items will vary depending on the surroundings. For instance, if you're in a shipping container, sounds will echo more, adding depth to the auditory experience. Overall, these sound enhancements aim to emulate real-life scenarios more accurately, contributing to the game's realism. A while back, there was a significant leak revealing a plethora of potential world encounters, random events that occur as you navigate the game world. I've displayed these on your screen, and while I won't go through each one, you'll notice they're quite fascinating. From parking disputes to donut burnouts, protests, and even someone getting a concussion, these events add depth and realism to the world of Vice City. It's truly exciting to imagine strolling through such a dynamic environment where something is always happening. Take a moment to review them if you like. They're quite impressive. Moving on, we have an extensive list of every confirmed vehicle slated to appear in GTA 6, sourced from both the game files and leaks. I covered these in detail in a previous video, so I won't repeat them here. However, I've provided them on your screen for your reference. If you're interested in exploring the full list yourself, you can find them on page 30 of the document. We've got a plethora of confirmed locations scattered throughout Vice City and its surrounding areas. Naturally, Vice City serves as the main hub, but within its bounds, we'll find neighborhoods like Edgewater, North by City, Rock Ridge, Little Haiti, Vice Beach, South Beach, Washington Beach, and Key Biscayne. Additionally, there's Port Gelhorn, which seems to be a distinct city akin to Sandy Shores or Palito Bay from previous games. Other notable spots include Yorktown, Ambrosia, Sundown, The Keys, La Pearl, Red Hill, Lake Leonida, Hamlet, Stockyard, Homestead, Grass Rivers, Ikenfaka, underwater locations, and more. The attention to detail extends to each of these locales, with various mini locations nested within them. It's astounding how much information we already have about the game's geography. Moving on, the community has endeavored to piece together a map of GTA 6 based on the coordinates and locations gleaned from leaks. This rough map outlines Vice City at the bottom right, with Port Gorn positioned on the left. The top section of the map remains a bit mysterious for now. Nonetheless, this preliminary map looks incredibly promising, and anticipation for exploring its intricacies is palpable. Finally, the document wraps up with around 20 pages detailing places found in the leaks that align with real-world locales in Miami. The continuously changing landscape of the World League in GTA 6. We'll delve into the insights provided by the Tom Henderson leak from two years ago, which surprisingly proved to be accurate. Our discussion will encompass all the elements confirmed by both the official trailer and subsequent leaks, as well as explore the fresh details concerning GTA 6 and its online counterpart. Among the intriguing revelations yet to materialize is the concept of an ever-evolving world. Let's dive right in. A credible source, Tom Henderson, shared insights about GTA 6 approximately two years back, presenting his perspectives in a video. GTA 6 release date, Vice City, modern setting, and more. In his video, he discusses the details he had gathered regarding GTA 6, many of which turned out to be accurate. This video serves as a recap of his findings and addresses the leaks that are yet to be confirmed. At the outset of the video, Tom Henderson acknowledged that he isn't typically associated with GTA leaks and urged viewers to take his information with a pinch of salt. However, the information he has shared thus far about the game has remarkably aligned with subsequent leaks, lending credence to his claims. While not known specifically for GTA-related leaks, he has established himself as a reliable source within the gaming community. Let's begin by briefly summarizing what has been confirmed thus far. Henderson stated that GTA 6 would be set in modern times, a decision influenced by the success of GTA Online, allowing for the release of numerous DLCs. This prediction has been validated by official announcements. Additionally, he disclosed that Vice City would make a return to the game, contrary to speculation suggesting a sprawling map akin to the Project America's leaks, which hinted at the inclusion of parts of South America. Based on the information gleaned from the mapping project leaks and the trailer, it appears that the map of GTA 6 will encompass locations from the state of Florida and its environs, confirming earlier speculations. Another intriguing detail shared by Henderson is the presence of multiple playable protagonists, one of whom is described as a female character with a penchant for technology and hacking. This revelation aligns with the introduction of Lucia as one of the protagonists, potentially embodying the modern-day Bonnie of a Bonnie and Clyde narrative, evidenced by the tools she carries, suggesting a proficiency in hacking. Lucia carries Tracker Jammer, Immobilizer Bypass, USB Drive, Auto Dialer, 
which could be indicated to Tom Henderson's old leak about the female hacker protagonist. Tracker Jammer is a device used to prevent GPS tracking devices from receiving or transmitting signals. It may be used in the game to prevent the police from finding you. Hacking the immobilizer using the PDA by matching the code for luxury vehicles. As seen in GTA Chinatown Wars for luxury car theft, Auto Dialer may be automatic calls for fraud technical. This particular aspect also appears to hold true. Additionally, he disclosed that the release window would fall between 2024 and 2025, which indeed turned out to be accurate. Furthermore, he mentioned that the game would be available solely on current generation consoles and PC. During the video, the leaker also suggested potential enhancements to the map, such as introducing new areas and expanding its size in some manner. Moreover, he proposed that the map would undergo alterations with each DLC, akin to how Fortnite incorporated changes like the meteor crashing into the map. These dynamic events would inject further excitement into the online experience. Furthermore, Bloomberg's Jason Schreier lent support to Tom Henderson's assertions regarding the release timeline of GTA 6. Initially, Schreier stated that Henderson's information aligned with what he had heard about the game. However, he later clarified that he hadn't verified every detail provided by the leaker. Nevertheless, Schreier affirmed that GTA 6 is indeed in the early stages of development and would feature an evolving and expanding map. This piece, naturally, dates back to 2021, coinciding with the time of the leaks. However, it's evident that the information provided has garnered validation from several reputable sources. I also wanted to delve into this particular nugget of insight. Information found for GTA 6 on the Rockstar Job Openings page. Hi, there is a vacant position at Rockstar New England Studio for a VFX artist. Included is some information on what we may expect from Rockstar's next new title. The visual effects help to immerse the player in a believable world. From using ambient effects for things like insects around the player, and rain dripping off buildings up to large-scale destruction events like skyscrapers crashing to the ground. The insects around the player does seem like an obvious addition if the game was set around Florida, as all the recent leaks are pointing to. The large-scale destruction events also lend some hints that the recent leak, including information that hurricanes are present in the next title, could be quite accurate. Thoughts on all this? The information doesn't specify whether the extensive destruction will occur in real time or as part of a scripted sequence. Nonetheless, it's an intriguing prospect. It seems probable that GTA 6 will feature a dynamic map, akin to Fortnite's model. This could involve the addition of new structures, alterations to existing ones, or perhaps even more unexpected changes. I'm keen to hear your thoughts on this. Feel free to share in the comments section what events you'd like to see incorporated into GTA 6's online component. Now, let's dive into some fresh job postings from Rockstar that seem to hint at GTA 6 nearing its completion. So, what are these gigs about? They're for localization testers. Now, what exactly does a localization tester do? Well, they basically test out software and give feedback on any language-related issues. This involves stuff like the script, UI elements, and in-game pop-ups. These testers make sure everything fits and makes sense for specific locations and regions, whether it's a city or even a whole country. Rockstar recently dropped some ads for localization testers on LinkedIn and Reddit. Check it out, they're hiring for Spanish, Latin American, traditional Chinese, and Spanish. Looks like things are heating up over at Rockstar Games. If you check out Rockstar's careers site, you'll find more listings. Take a look at Rockstar Lincoln for quality assurance and release management roles, including localization tester positions. They're looking for folks fluent in Spanish, Latin American, Brazilian Portuguese, French, German, Italian, Spanish, and traditional Chinese. Seems like they're really ramping up for something big. Under the What We Do section, it says, the Rockstar localization team provide high quality localization on all Rockstar products and services. We work closely with all development teams to provide input during internationalization and localization development phases. We advise our external localization teams with the information they need to provide high quality translation. We rigorously test all products and services to ensure final quality matches that which our end users expect on a Rockstar product. Here's the responsibilities. Provide dev support and localization consultation to all internal development and publishing teams. Provide consultation during internationalization to aid with font selection, character support, texture review, UL design and prototyping, etc. Proofread all translated text for all products and services. 
Perform localization QA to ensure final product quality is as high as possible. Ensure that localized first-party terminology is compliant with applicable naming conventions and brand guidelines. Perform ad hoc translations where necessary. Here's another description for the position. The localization QA tester will analyze in-game texts to validate grammar, syntax, spelling, and proper location on a variety of different platforms to ensure compliance with all console and handheld manufacturers' localized official terminologies. In addition, he will also review and perform exhaustive language tests to ensure text and audio respect the cultural aspects of a game's local edition remains in context and is consistent throughout. The localization QA tester is responsible for testing, identifying, recording, and suggesting fixes to potential bugs in video and computer games relating to language, implementation, user interface, and compliance issues. So, what does this all mean? Well, it suggests that most, if not all, of the script and UI elements are likely finalized for GTA 6. Great news, right? It indicates that the game is nearing completion and is now in the polishing stage. With this progress, an early 2025 release seems even more likely. It looks like the core content of the game is set, and Rockstar is now focusing on polishing it up to their high standards. I'll be discussing the recent developments in the GTA 6 mapping project. We'll delve into the latest additions, including new locations featured in Trailer 1, adjustments to existing locations, refinements in certain areas, and exciting discoveries from the latest trailer, such as the yacht interior, surfboards, princess robot bubblegum, and more. Let's start by examining the mapping project itself. It's been some time since our last update on this front, and there have been notable changes to the map since then. This iteration represents the most recent version of the GTA 6 mapping project, spearheaded by Dupi's Zero R. Below, you'll find a roster of individuals who have contributed to this endeavor, and it's worth noting that this list has been recently updated. This project stands as the largest and most comprehensive effort within the fan community, with the goal of predicting the map of GTA 6 as accurately as possible prior to its official unveiling. DUPZ's Zero R mentioned that there's still an extensive list of elements to incorporate and modify, but for now, this update suffices. Anticipate further alterations to the map in subsequent updates. This iteration represents the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. Notable adjustments have been made to the legend and the manner in which various elements are annotated on the map. All markers now include viewing cones to indicate their general viewing direction. However, it's important to note that the angle of these cones is merely symbolic. Additionally, speculative location markers have been updated with red outlines to differentiate them from non-location markers. Furthermore, coordinate markers now display their corresponding clip names for easier identification. Changes have also been made to the naming conventions in the key section. For instance, you'll notice that the markers now include the names of the clips they are derived from. Let's delve into the alteration specific to Vice City. The angles of Rock Ridge and Stockyard have been tweaked to align with calculations slash evidence and to better match the coordinates. By observing the outlines, you can see that both the Rock Ridge and Stockyard areas have been subtly adjusted, ensuring a more cohesive layout. There's a noticeable improvement in alignment. A notable update to the map is this section here. Previously, absent features have been incorporated from the edges of one of Rock Ridge's mini-maps, and adjustments have been made to the water's edge in that vicinity now depicted in dark green to indicate the genuine boundaries of this section of the Vice River. Additionally, several buildings in the Rock Ridge area have been identified, including the Rock Ridge Community Research Center, Miami Police Department, Venture Apartments, Orange and Pink, 7071 Warren Thacker Manor, inspired by Martin Fine Villa, Palace Cafe and Diary, all sourced from leaks. Furthermore, there are two speculative markers outlined in red, representing locations from the trailer. One in Rock Ridge is speculated to be the Hammer Hamlet Ladies location, while the other marks the high roller scene from the trailer. You can find the timestamps for both scenes on the map. Updates have been made to the route of the I-404, incorporating new evidence. This includes adjustments in Vice Beach and the positioning of the road near Rock Ridge. Notably, there have been alterations to the highway section near the airport. Additionally, speculative terrain and building positions in Washington Beach have been revised to align more closely with the evidence. Changes have been made to the shapes and locations of the Ritz-Carlton Bal Harbor, Akoya Condos, and Jade Ocean Condos. Furthermore, alongside the speculative road and landmass in the Bayfront Heights area, the Y Vice City and Gate Continental Hotels have been included in the Vice Beach vicinity. 
Additionally, several minor adjustments and fixes have been implemented. Regarding the Vice Beach area, there have been additions of new buildings supported by recent evidence. These include 200 Ocean Drive, 260 Ocean Drive, 1043 Washington Avenue, Beach Park Hotel, and Council Towers North. Moreover, over at Brickell Key Island, two new buildings, Brickell Key 1 and Brickell Key 2, have been introduced. Additionally, corrections have been made to the names of the Tequesta Point locations, accurately reflecting their respective positions. Now, let's shift our focus away from Vice City. Firstly, an error regarding St. Joseph has been rectified. Previously labeled in purple, it should have been marked in red to signify that this name hasn't been confirmed in the leaks, but is either speculative or based on real-life data. Moving westward towards Port Gellhorn, there have been notable additions to the leaked industrial area opposite the state prison, along with improvements to the prison itself. Several speculative structures, highlighted in red, including a water tower and industrial buildings, have been incorporated, along with a cell tower across from the prison. Heading south to the Keys, significant improvements have been made. Adjustments to the landmass near the camera location, where the shot with the Dodal seaplane occurs, have been made based on speculative evidence. An airbase slash runway has been added, along with guard booth and barriers visible in the trailer. Additionally, two speculative buildings marked in red, as well as the speculative naval area station, have been included. That wraps up all the updates to the GTA 6 mapping project. Share your thoughts in the comments below. There have been some significant changes with this update. But now, let's shift our attention to the discoveries made in the trailer. I also wanted to touch on these findings in this video. This marks the initial Reddit post. In the GTA 6 trailer, you can see through the yacht windows and see the interior even though it's very far away. However, in GTA 5, you can't at all see the interior even from close up. We will probably get inside the yacht and maybe even houses, or at least see inside it. In the shot of the Venetian island, it's evident that there will be a high density of yachts. It seems that the boats will be easily accessible, and based on the leaked shot featuring Jason on a boat from 2022, it's probable that players will have the freedom to enter, drive, and explore yachts like the catamaran seen in the opening scene of the trailer. Now, on to the next discovery, surfboards. Know a lot of people been talking about surfing, and while there's still nothing indicating it being an interactive mini-game surfboards, are in-game and seen in the trailer. Surfboards were in five, but only on the tops of certain cars, and a few static ones sat the beach. What do you all think? Will surfboards act as decorations like they were in five, or will it be a fully fledged minigame? Personally, I'm not fully convinced yet, but if NPCs do have actual schedules slash lives, I can't see things like surfboards just being static, especially at the beach. My guess is we'll see NPCs bring their own items to and from the beach, including surfboards, but the interactiveness is still in question. From the leaks, there hasn't been any information indicating that surfing will be an interactive activity in the game. Nonetheless, there have been numerous articles discussing this possibility, like the one mentioned here. Major GTA 6 leak allegedly hints at surfing to debut in series. The upcoming GTA 6, officially untitled, leaks are becoming more frequent and interesting, with a recent one revealing that the upcoming title will include new water sports, such as surfing. According to a report by the Dexerto Gaming website, a leaker named Alix Venturas revealed on Twitter that Rockstar Games plans to improve the water physics in Grand Theft Auto 6 and will introduce several water-based activities. While the gaming studio has not officially commented on the leak, players are convinced, given that Grand Theft Auto 6 will almost certainly feature Vice City, a fictional version of Miami, Florida, known for its beaches and water activities. However, it's important to note that these rumors haven't been confirmed by either the official leaks or the trailer. It remains to be seen whether these surfboards will merely serve as decorations. Now, on to the next and final discovery I'd like to highlight in this video, which might just be your favorite. Princess Robot Bubblegum is confirmed to be in GTA 6. Just like the Righteous Slaughter game series, Princess Robot Bubblegum is seen on a shirt, and will most likely return with more episodes. The series originally appeared in The Ballad of Gay Tony, and again with more episodes in GTA 5, making this the third appearance. This patent sheds light on the intricacies of in-game traffic, promising a heightened level of realism compared to previous iterations. We'll explore the notable enhancements Rockstar has implemented, creating a more sophisticated system that elevates the gaming experience. By examining various sources, we aim to provide a comprehensive overview of this navigation system, offering insights into what Rockstar has in store for NPC navigation in GTA 6. Let's delve into the details of this intriguing patent. 
system and method for virtual navigation in a gaming environment. Let's break down this patent for a moment. Essentially, it gives us insight into how non-playable characters operate within the game environment. They explain that NPCs' actions are controlled through artificial intelligence, allowing for real-time decision-making based on preset algorithms. In many systems, this is achieved through nodes and links, where each node contains important data that influences NPC movement. For example, in a game involving vehicles, this data could include factors like vehicle speed, lane width, road type, and number of lanes. Now, these nodes are essentially waypoints that NPCs follow to navigate from one point to another. In simpler sections of the road, these nodes might be connected linearly, guiding NPCs straightforwardly. But in more complex areas, like junctions, the nodes become more intricate. Take a basic intersection, for instance. A vehicle approaching it would have several exit options, leading to a branching network of nodes. In older systems, like the one used in GTA V, NPCs might make decisions at these junctions based on simple rules, sometimes leading to behaviors that seem a bit random. However, this conventional method has its limitations, especially when it comes to handling various factors like weather conditions, changing lanes, parking cars, or anticipating road exits. In these situations, the old system could falter, as NPCs might not adapt well to the dynamic environment. One downside of the node-based system is its limited capacity to replicate real-life factors that humans naturally consider. Another drawback is its constraint in automating NPCs effectively. Due to memory and processing limitations, only a set number of NPC-controlled cars can be spawned in the game. Naturally, players crave a more immersive experience with a greater number of NPC-controlled cars on the road. Moreover, in conventional systems, NPCs often repeat the same actions, and some may even disappear as players get closer to them. Additionally, in GTA V, the system relies on local traffic avoidance for NPCs to steer clear of collisions. This means that NPCs continuously scan their immediate surroundings each frame for any obstacles like vehicles, pedestrians, or objects. Using a front-facing polygon, they gather data about the road layout and calculate the optimal steering angle to dodge obstacles or stay on the road. It's worth noting that this process occurs independently for each frame, without any reference to previous frames. This results in slower detection, as the system may not recognize a road blockage promptly. Instead, it interprets the obstruction as something to be avoided, without distinguishing it as a complete road blockage. Recognizing these limitations, Rockstar has engineered an NPC system that addresses these shortcomings of conventional systems. This advanced system efficiently manages NPC nodes and node graphs, yielding optimal outcomes while circumventing hardware and software constraints. NPCs in this system demonstrate heightened spatial awareness and adaptability, capable of altering routes based on real-time data from the environment. Moreover, this innovative system synergizes with the tagging mechanism discussed in earlier discussions. Through node analysis, the system identifies tags, such as indicating a road leads to a junction unsuitable for large vehicles. Consequently, large vehicles are deterred from entering. Furthermore, NPCs within this system consider various attributes of vehicle types, models, including speed restrictions, acceleration and braking capabilities, top speeds, cornering abilities, and vehicle size. NPCs will consider a plethora of data from their surroundings, leading to heightened situational awareness. Video games are populated by NPCs who are able to make real-time decisions based on their environment. Games use a specific system for NPCs to traverse the game world. However, this system is very limited, and thus the decisions NPCs can make are very limited as well. NPCs in vehicles only consider their close vicinity, but nothing else. Also, to avoid collisions, NPCs only consider the last generated frame and base their reaction on that. No prior frames are considered. Rockstar has invented a new system which aims to fix these issues and make NPCs more intelligent and thus make the game world feel more realistic. NPCs can now consider factors like traffic, as well as account for changing lanes when parking cars, anticipating a road exit, weather conditions, and the like. There are more than a predetermined number of NPC-controlled cars in the game now for a realistic experience for the player. Vehicles can now plan accordingly in case there is any type of road blockage. This also applies to police cars being able to navigate their way through traffic during a chase. I'd like to highlight another breakdown of the patent, which dates back three years ago. Let's delve into it. Take away from yesterday's patent post. I've read over the patent post from yesterday, and I noticed a lot of people missed the most exciting information in it. 
I'll sum it up in non-technical language. It's essentially a method to improve vehicle AL when driving currently. When NPCs drive on the road, they can sense a few cars around them to determine crashes or other things to drive around. This is dumb AL, as it has very few factors to take into account, and requires a lot of computational resources. This is why vehicles despawn when far away to free up the CPU. Rockstar's patent describes a system that primarily will change this and give NPCs more situational awareness. They will essentially have an objective of navigating from one location to another, simplified, but is essential in making routines similar to RDR2, and be able to take into account other external factors. Coolest of all, NPCs will still exist when your game isn't rendering them in this implementation. Specific examples mentioned by Rockstar state they will be able to use weather conditions, traffic, and crashes to determine where to go. Some areas might be dangerous in the rain, they might avoid it. If an area has too much traffic, they will avoid it. Possibly destructible environmental areas could be reacted to. Similar to bridges in Just Cause, this point is speculation, however. Cars will also be able to take into account number of lanes and speed in their decisions. NPCs will be also able to take into account high-speed chases and be able to navigate if they themselves are speeding. There will also be other reactions that are mentioned specifically, such as changing lanes before a highway exit appears, and as Rockstar puts it, driving slower on residential type roads, or having to perform certain maneuvers to avoid oncoming traffic on single lane streets. The large part they also mention is this implementation uses a lot less processing power. The NPC schedules can be relayed by a central server, they could possibly use the console itself as well, and it doesn't require the same constant surrounding analysis. As previous Al Rockstar mentions, this will allow them to have denser traffic with the same resources. A large aim also seems to be realism. Rockstar's patent mentions realistic reactions to various factors as being the main intent. For example, NPCs will each have different driving ability levels, based on the driver and the car. Essentially, each driver will have its own profile, and have unique driving characteristics as well as skill level. Some might speed, others might not. Each vehicle will also affect the driving of these drivers. We are eagerly anticipating the debut of this new system in action in GTA 6. Share your thoughts in the comments section below.